or Nebraska man. They created an entire skeleton with arms, legs, feet, hands, even facial features when all they really had was one tooth, which later was found to be the tooth of an extinct pig. or Piltdown Man. The jawbone turned out to belong to a modern ape. And of course, Neanderthal Man, whose famous skeleton found in France over 50 years ago was that of an old man who suffered from arthritis. Hardly scientific proof. Listen to what the famous Harvard evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould said about the fossil record. The extreme rarity of transitional forms in the fossil records persists as the trade secret of paleontology. Have you ever been mystified as to why human beings and apes have so many similar features? After all, compare our hands to the hands of apes. They're very similar, and our feet are a lot the same. In fact, we can make many of the same facial expressions and other things that apes can do. To prove this point, we hired an orangutan for the day and had some fun. Check this out. When I'm happy, my face goes something like this. When I'm embarrassed. If I don't agree. If I want to be nasty. If I've heard a bad joke. If I've heard enough. If I'm feeling affectionate. If I agree. Does this prove that men evolved from apes? No, not at all. Think of it like this. Think of the biplane and the 747 jumbo jet. They're both very similar. After all, they both have wings, they both have landing gear, cockpits. Does that mean that the jet evolved from the little biplane? Not at all. It just means they have a common designer. The designer used a similar blueprint for each one. Same with us. God, the creator of the world and the universe, is our common designer. He simply used a similar blueprint when creating the hands and feet and facial expressions of men and apes.
Despite the fact that there is no evidence when it comes to the theory of evolution, we're continually told that primates are our relatives. So we decided we'd have a little fun and call a number of airlines and ask if we could have a relative fly on the plane with us. Despite the fact that airlines won't allow primates on planes for obvious reasons, there are some scientists who have us believe that primates are just about as intelligent as human beings. So Kirk and I took an orangutan to lunch to see if it was true. The incident reinforced the fact that the primate is limited when it comes to the unique ability, the human ability to reason, to invent, to appreciate the sound of music. You see, you don't get orangutans forming themselves into an orchestra. You don't get them forming themselves into a court system to mete out justice to its fellow creatures. This isn't because he's a prehistoric man who is less evolved than us. But it's because he's another species. The revered father of evolution, the man who really made the theory popular, is Charles Darwin. He wrote Origin of Species and the Descent of Man. Ladies, listen to what he had to say about women. The chief distinction in the intellectual powers of the two sexes is shown by man attaining to a higher eminence in whatever he takes up than women can attain, whether requiring deep thought, reason, or imagination, or merely the use of the senses and hands. Did you hear that? He's saying that man has evolved to a higher eminence over women in basically anything he decides to do, whether it requires reason, imagination, or deep thought. Darwinian evolution, at its core, is not only male chauvinistic, but it's also very racist. Charles Darwin wants us to believe that black people are less evolved than whites. If we can't convince you of how unscientific the theory of evolution is, 